Well, hello, sixth grade. On this piece of paper, you're going to find everything that you need to begin your two-dimensional mask design. One side is going to be the side you're going to use for the project, and this side is going to tell you everything you need to know about the project. So make sure you go through and read it. I'm not going to read it to you, but I will give you a little bit of time to go through it in class. It's a lot of reading, and there are a couple typos in there, so if you want to go ahead and correct some of my directions, please feel free to do that. Big thing to remember is that this piece is vitally important. These will all be on display for the art show on October 4th, and so you have three class periods starting today to get this thing all the way done. Since it's going to be on display for all the parents to see and all the kids, put your best effort into it. Paper Brady agrees. The art cart is back. And here's everything that's on the art cart. This is just to get started. I've got tons more cardboard. We've got extra material left over from that back to school project. I'll have more feathers. We got wires, pipe cleaners, straws, this kind of stuff. We've got some twine and some sticks. We've also got the leftover foam core board and I've got a ton of old egg cartons that I used to use for storage. If you want to cut some of these up, please do so. Newspaper as well if you need that. So the next time you see my design right here, it's going to have some stuff on it. Let's get started. All right, I'm still in progress on this thing. I've only got the drawings, but I thought I'd take a second and explain kind of what's going on to you here. A lot of this is representative of art. I'm planning on filling in these kind of curly Q dudes with black paint because I love the composition that ends up um, occurring when you've got a lot of dark, dark, like permanent marker black on white paper. And then I'm gonna color these in, I'm gonna paint these in colorfully. That way it also represents painting. I've got this piece filled in and it says cut because I'm going to cut that out and I want a cardboard background behind this thing that I'll show you when it's all done. Part of what I like to do with my own art is I like to draw faces so I've kind of got the curve of a cheekbone of a human skull because I really appreciate the curvature of the face when drawing them. And up here, I've got a fabric pattern because I find a lot of times when I'm just kind of doing my own free draws, they're very, very geometric. Um, and then I've got kind of an implied eyebrow line here. And I've got a little piece that says foam core because I'm going to take some foam core and I'm going to stack it up. And then I kind of thought it'd be cool to cut out one of these pieces of this egg carton and use it as an eye. An eye being pretty important to me because I'm a visual artist. Also important to me are my hands. That's why you just saw me trace my right hand. I'm a right-handed artist. Um, hands are a pretty big deal when it comes to art, so I thought I'd put those in there as well. With things like foam core board, scissors just don't work. So we are gonna be using X-Acto knives again, and since you've already used them before, it's, uh, it should just be review that whenever you're using an X-Acto knife, you're keeping your fingers out of the way of the blade, you're always using a cutting mat, and if it starts to roll, don't try to stop it, just let it do its thing. Now I need these pieces though, because this is going to eventually become what holds up my piece of my egg carton. Think for a minute that just because these are small scissors, they can't be used. I'm actually using these really sweet pink ones to do a little bit of cutting on this egg carton. I almost called it a milk carton. Egg carton. And it's all recycled paper, dude, so it should be pretty easy to cut it out. Voila! The power of the pink scissors. Paper Brady agrees. High five. Handshake. Hey, you're back. So I kind of started to just put down a few things. I've got the foam core back there, but I still need more to stack this thing up. But you can kind of get the idea that it's going to become an eye eventually. I've got my wooden sticks arranged down here. I thought it'd be kind of cool to use them for teeth. Um, one thing that I would like to show you, though, is that our scissors will actually cut those pieces of wood pretty easily. I got that piece 
trimmed up a little bit. I do like the way it looks when all those pieces of wood are not the same size. Now, I thought maybe I would use some of this purple wire to help with some of my outlining. Before I attach it, obviously, I want to measure it. And right there where my pointer finger's at, that's where I want to cut it. So I'm going to pinch it with those scissors, and now I know exactly how long I need to trim that thing. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. So here's a pro tip. It's always a good idea to plan your materials out and get them ready. Obviously, since I'm going to be making something that's got pieces sticking out, the very first thing I want to do is fill in all the color on the flat piece of paper. That way I can color, I can paint, get all of this ready. That way when I start to put my 3D pieces on, everything looks nice and neat. Now, let's pretend for a second that that timer's gone off and holy moly, boy that table's a mess. My partner is gonna start cleaning up, aren't you partner? Yep. And I'm gonna start cleaning up all of this stuff by putting it back in the right spots. All right. I'm still in progress, but I've got all the Sharpie marker, regular marker pieces that I want down before I start painting. Just a few things I wanted to show you. If down here where I did my fingers, if that's an effect that you're interested in, all I did was use a table marker. And then I'm coming back in with an ultra fine Sharpie and I'm just outlining one side of the color of that table marker, kind of like this. If I want my fabric here, it's going to be kind of hard to figure out how to cut to fit that piece because I obviously can't see through the fabric. So I'm going to show you an easy way to do that and all you're going to have to do is get yourself a permanent marker and you're going to trace the outline of where you want that fabric to go. And then we're going to head right over there to the window. So now that I've got that part outlined, I should be able to hold this thing up on the glass and be able to see through it just enough that I can trace my pattern with my permanent marker. Now, when I do this, I want to make sure I'm using one of those ultra-fine permanent markers because otherwise we might get some marker that bleeds out on the edges. And all I'm really doing with this is making a nice light line so I can still see enough to cut it, but it's not that big of a deal that it's going to show up in my design. We have quite a few small brushes this year. They're pretty delicate and obviously pretty clean. So you're welcome to use them. Just make sure when you're done with them, you clean them out right away. That way that paint doesn't dry in there and we can continue to use them all year long. So as we think about adding paint and other materials to this project, it's important to think in terms of steps. Now, if you're using pencil and marker, you wanna do that first. If you're using fabric, you'd want to do that second. Put your paints third. Then anything you're going to cut, cut that out fourth after the paint has dried. We're using acrylic paint, which means if you put it on too thick here, it's going to start making your paper bend and warp, and you might not want that. So if you've been paying attention at all, you've probably noticed that I'm using pretty much the minimal amount of paint that I need to cover up this white paper. Big art room no no that paint is drying in that brush well it's just sitting there put it in the water let's do a quick refresher on how not to wash these brushes out because i know paper brady really wants to see this 
Just a reminder, folks, we wash our paintbrushes out like normal human beings or like sixth graders should know how. That means you're kind of stirring it around in there, making sure all that water is mixing with your bristles, and then you pull them to dry them. Here's what you wouldn't want to do, especially with two brushes at the same time. Poor Paper Brady, he's got water all over him now. And now I've got more to clean up because there's stuff everywhere. Holy smokes, I was banging that thing so hard one of these paintbrushes fell apart even. Yikes. Oh man, I'm looking at so far. I'm gonna have to get some new colors of paint because I wanna paint those bright, but right now I'm letting this all dry. I haven't cut anything yet, and I also haven't started to build up anything. My foam core is not even on there. I also gotta fill in some of this space down here. But I think it might be time for me to do a little walk around and see how everybody is doing on their mask. Paper Brady, let's see what you got going on over here. Hey, I like that you're wearing your, uh, your apron. Oh, whoa, oh. What? Paper, Brady? You're supposed to be the example of what work looks like. I know you're better than this. What What even is this? this? This is a mess. That's a one, dude. I know you can do better than that. I think you should restart on this. Let me help you this time. Otherwise, I'm going to put you in that recycle bag. Sorry about Paper Brady's example. But while we were handling that, my paint's dry. And now I'm ready to add some bright colors to this. So I want you to see this. I've got paint right there and I'm coming in with my pencil around it. Now that acrylic paint that we used is a cool thing because if you're looking at this you can actually add pencil over the top of it. Oh, time to clean up. Paper Brady, do you want to help clean? Hey, what? Where? Where? Oh, man. He's over there playing around with the hole punches. Oh, so let's see. Scissors go back in there. Scraps. Uh, that actually looks like enough that I can save it. I'm going to put this back on the art carts. You know what? I'm going to help this guy out. He really likes those hole punches. So maybe next time he'll clean up the stuff for me. That's definitely not how those go back. Give it a twist. Okay, that's better. I'll take paper ready. I've got this for you. I've got, I got your water. It's fine. Okay, so to create this, what I did, I started with a blank piece of paper. I took my brayer. I rolled it in the purple and rolled my cardboard, and then I took my paper, laid it over the purple, patted it down nice and firm, lifted it up, and it gave me the purple lines. Then to add the green, I rinsed off my brayer from the purple, rolled it in green, rolled the bubble wrap, and then I took my paper, which had the purple lines, laid it on top of the green, patted it down nice and firm, lifted it up, and I was left with this. All right, everybody give our special guest artist a nice golf clap.